Okay, welcome back everybody. Um, what we're going to talk about now is um, potatoes. One thing that people do get quite wrong is, um, believe it or not, jacket potatoes, which are quite easy to do. But first of all, choosing the right potato. Um, thankfully, the supermarkets do that for us now. You can actually go into the supermarket and buy a packet of potatoes that does say jacket potatoes on them. Well, let's have a look at the potato in itself. There are two types, I mean, there are hundreds of varieties of potato, um, too many to mention today, um, plus the fact I don't actually know them all. And um, so the two types are a floury potato and a waxy potato. And getting the right potato for the right potato dish that you're going to do is key. So for a jacket potato, what you're looking for is a nice floury potato, because once cooked, that will give you a nice fluffy centre to work with. So, a good all-rounder in the UK is the good old Maris Piper, or you could go for the good old King Edward. So, and once again the supermarkets now actually label all their bags of potatoes so you know actually which variety that you're getting. So I've chosen a nice Maris Piper potato for my jacket potato. And then all you need to do is, they're nicely cleaned for you already in the supermarket. So all I tend to do is get a sharp knife and I just run my knife around the circumference of the potato and that's it. A lot of people would like to stick knife in, prick it and all that. That's just personal preference. I like to do it all the way around and then the heat gets in to the potato like I said, all the way around the circumference. Cutting the potato is important, um, not purely just to get the heat in, but occasionally you will get a rogue potato that will explode on you. So giving it a little prick will help prevent that. What I then like to do is just get some normal little bit of vegetable oil, get it on your fingers, and then lightly just give your potato a rub over with some vegetable oil. What that will do is that will give you a nice crispy skin once it's come out of the oven. All I do then, place it onto a little tray. I will place that in an oven for approximately 220 degrees centigrade for 15 minutes. Then I will drop that temperature down to about 180, 190. I'll leave it in there for about 45 minutes to an hour. Now that doesn't mean to say that walk away, go back an hour, and your potato will be cooked. What you need to do is take into consideration the size of the potato that you're putting in from the beginning, and all it needs is open the oven door, give your potato a little bit of a prick with a sharp knife, and then that will tell you whether or not it's done. If you like your potato a little bit softer, leave it in there longer. If you like it with a bit of crunch in it, take it out when you want. But basically that's it. So, potato done, in the oven, 220, 15 minutes, turned down for approximately uh, 45 minutes to an hour to 180, 190. Okay, so our potato's been in the oven now for a good hour and I don't know if you can hear that, but we've got a nice crispy skin on the outside of our potato. So, potato out onto the plate, cut down the center, using your fingers, squeeze in, open up that potato. And what I like to do is get a fork in there and fluff up that potato. like that and the toppings are once again endless um, if you want to keep it a little bit healthier don't put so much butter into the center of that potato if health isn't your isn't your issue then go for it the more but the more butter in there the better for me um, but then again saying that I like to top mine off with um, cottage cheese 
and baked beans. May sound a bit strange, but that's my taste buds for you. But once again, you can go in with tuna fish, you can go in with cheese, you can go in with beans, you can go in with chip, you can top it off with whatever you want. But basically, that's your jacket potato for you. Right, what we're gonna talk about now is my all-time favorite comfort food, mashed potatoes. The butter, the creamier, the better. Um, when you go to have this in a restaurant, it's called pom puree, and it might cost you a couple of quid extra. Um, but what I'm gonna try and do today is show you how to make the perfect pom puree stroke mashed potatoes at home. So, like I spoke about the jacket potato, um, getting the right potato for mashed potato is even more important. We talked about a floury potato and we talked about a waxy potato. What you need to choose for this is a floury potato. That will give you a nice creamy mashed potatoes. If you get it wrong and use a waxy potato, then what will happen is, as you work that potato in the pan to get your nice soft mashed potatoes, you'll end up releasing all that starch that's in them waxy potatoes and you'll end up with wallpaper paste. A floury potato. As with the jacket potato, a good all-rounder for mashed potatoes is Maris Piper. You can use Desiree, uh, you can use a King Edward, and the, there is a potato council out there, believe it or not, and they have chosen for the best potato for a mashed potato, it's called the Yukon Gold. So if you ever find one of them, use one of them for your mashed potatoes. But I tend to go with either a Desiree or a Maris Piper. And in the supermarkets, you can get either of them. And thankfully, like I said before, they do label it on the bags. So, I do mine slightly different. I don't boil my potatoes, because what will happen is they will just absorb all that water and what you want is a nice dry potato to start with. What I did was I baked my potato off just like I did with my jacket potato. I've probably taken it a little bit further than I would my jacket potato because I want to make sure that the inside of that potato is nice and soft. So how do we get to mashed potatoes? You can, if you wish, scrape, open up your potato And then getting a spoon, you just take out that potato and put that into your pan. And if you've got one of those potato mashers at home, you, that's quite easy to do. But what I'll do is I'll get my pan. I've bought one of these, just a normal sieve, a couple of quid from the supermarket. And then all I do with my jacket potato is scoop it out. And if you wish, keep the skins. Fill them with a nice bit of cheese and onion, put them back in the oven and you've got nice loaded potato skins so nothing is going to waste. Scrape that in. And we'll do, we'll do both of them. So as you can see, easy as that. Like I said, if you want to use them skins, then they're there to use for another meal, another snack. The thing is, without boiling them as well, you're not messing around with more pans, you're not messing around with draining them, letting them dry out. So, if you do have a jacket spud anyway, put a couple of extra in, and then you've got mashed potatoes for the next day. Because these are all right if you let them go cold, because as you're gonna see in a minute, we're gonna heat them back up on the stove and bring them back to life. So, cook a couple off, and then you've got them in the fridge for mashed potatoes, should you wish later on. So, what we're gonna do is, Get one of these, you can use a, a normal spoon or a spatula at home, and then we're just going to press the potato into the sieve and force it through the holes in the sieve. Take your time, no rush. And like I said, if you're having visitors round, you know what I mean? You can uh, get this prepped in advance, get these mashed through, 
leave them on the side to go cold and then like I'll show you in a minute we can bring them back to life a bit later on. Okay so keep pressing it through and as you can see all the potato has been forced through that sieve and it's nicely mashed for us minus any lumps. Like I say you can use um, a normal potato mash is fine um, but I just find this gives a nice creamy mashed potatoes without any lumps. Um, out there as well is uh, a, a contraption called a potato ricer and all you do is it's a bit like a giant garlic press you fill, put your potato in there and just press it through and once again that forces it through and gets rid of any lumps should there be any lumps in there. So as you can see I've got my potato all put through the, the sieve like that. At this point I'm going to add a little pinch of pepper and I mean I love peppery mashed potatoes. White pepper's um, good if you can get it but just be careful with white pepper it can be quite strong and like I've said before you can always add but you can never take it away. So a little, little and often and then just keep test, tasting it till you get the right and then this is where we go crazy. Let's get plenty of butter in there. Now the professionals out there, and I've done exactly the same when I've worked elsewhere in the industry, is I've used equal quantities of mashed potato to equal quantities of butter. But like I said, that's going to cost you a little bit of extra money in the restaurant. Uh, but nice bit of butter in there, onto the heat. And this is where if you had a waxy potato, this is where you would end up with um, wallpaper paste. So a nice floury potato will work great here. So what we're looking at doing is melting that butter down and then we're going to work that butter into the mashed potato. And believe it or not, I mean, like I've said, equal quantities of each, that potato will take it. I don't bother with any cream any milk, just loads of butter. You control the pan, so if it's getting too hot, get that pan off the heat and work that butter in. And then just keep working it in, get it back on the heat. Don't be afraid at this point to give that good old mashed potato obviously you're going to have a smaller pan at home which is going to be a lot more easier Okay, so as you can see, I've got that butter worked nicely into that mashed potato now. Yeah, got a good amount of salt and pepper in there. And then all you do is get your plate, get that mashed potato nicely onto the plate. And there you go. You've got some nice buttery, creamy mashed potatoes there. No lumps, absolutely gorgeous. Nice bit of sausage and gravy on there would just go beautiful. Thank you very much.